Hello everyone. Uh, so as they said, uh, Joe, my wife and business partner, who is a uh, co-founder in our startup, is here with me. And uh, Charlie, of course, just sitting on the floor there. Uh, some of you may not be able to see him. So today I'm here to talk about uh, My Disability Matters, uh, which is an online community that we have built on top of WordPress. Uh, using a couple of different solutions that I'll go into uh, our experience with them and what we've decided to come back to. Um, the disability sector, for those uh, who are wondering and why we are targeting that, uh, does make up about 20% of the world's population. Uh, not all with visible disabilities, of course. Uh, some, uh, we encompass mental health issues, mental illness, uh, and all other sorts of invisible disabilities as well. Um, so our focus is not just on technical accessibility in terms of being able to use the website, um, but very much unlike Facebook and Twitter, actually enforcing uh, community standards. Uh, so not to bully, troll, abuse, uh, and to keep a, a civil, and not to say that we don't allow uh, dissent and robust discussions and things, but just no personal uh, attacks. And uh, to enforce those standards has very much um, got people to come and join the community. And also loneliness is a very big problem in the disability sector. Uh, so that's another reason that we have built the community to help people to get to meet others uh, and to make friends all over the uh, world. Uh, unlike Facebook, which really seeks to expand your network through your current group of friends and out to their friends, uh, we hope to introduce people to completely new uh, friends and new contacts uh, that aren't in their present uh, circle of friends at the moment. Oh, yeah. So the, uh, the main issue that led to us actually developing uh, My Disability Matters is accessibility. Um, and I mean accessibility in the broader sense. Obviously, there's what's known as the WCAG um, online standards for developing uh, websites, and there's been a new version of them out, them out in only the last month or so, uh, version 2.1. Um, but we are also looking at the, the usability and the user's experience on the website. Uh, because even though Facebook does employ uh, two or three accessibility people, which in an organisation their size is just really, in my opinion, a token uh, effort. Uh, it is the layout of their site um, with so much content laid out in a confusing uh, manner, uh, ads and different things everywhere on the page. Uh, one of the other worst um, things for accessibility is constantly changing your layout. Um, you, you may not notice when you look at uh, Facebook if you go there uh, all the time, but they seem to ch I, I know testing is very important to businesses, but they are constantly changing their layout every few days. And knowing where things are located on a website page is very important for accessibility and just um, efficient usage of the site so you know where to find things, how to actually navigate around the site. And very important component of design too is to use techniques that are common across all websites so that people are familiar with your navigation system and layout. So if you're going to do something that is uh, different from other sites, you uh, better have a very good reason for doing so, explain it uh, very carefully, and you're going to have much more support on your uh, hands. And as was in the introduction, when you're designing your community uh, and contact forms and blog posting comments on your site in uh, general, uh, I know that you don't want to uh, have too much uh, spam on your site, uh, but using those graphical captures is an absolutely terrible way to go. Um, they're not only bad for people with limited vision, but I know Joe, who has to help me fill them out, sometimes has to take several goes. They are just not a good uh, user experience for anyone. Um, Google has recently, in probably the last nine months or so, tried to make them a lot better. Um, many of you will be familiar with what's called Google Recapture, uh, which is now their older method um, of producing those captures. Uh, they now have, and there is a free WordPress plugin to implement it, uh, what's called the Invisible um, Recapture. So it operates in the background, 
and it's only if um, your activity on the site is suspicious and Google thinks you are a robot uh, that it then brings in the capture and actually challenges you. Um, I mean, it still has problems because many false positives, but it is a, a lot better. And there is, uh, which unfortunately can't uh, mention at WordCamp, but there is a brilliant uh, non-GPL solution that we actually use on our sites. It uh, doesn't use captures, and for us, it has actually blocked 100% of spam with just uh, no mistakes at all. Occasionally, the plugin, if it's accidentally turned off and the spam flows in again, and put it back on and uh, nothing coming through. So, um, and obviously, uh, I won't go heavily into it, but um, Gutenberg is, when you're looking at your community, uh, do be very mindful and look into accessibility if you're using that to design anything, because it is having uh, quite a few accessibility issues at the moment that I, I know they will overcome, but they're not going to be overcome by uh, launch in November. Um, so you will need to look into those. And that was actually one of the reasons for us choosing WordPress as our underlying stack for our community uh, was accessibility, being open source project, and WordPress does have an accessibility team. Then it is being developed uh, very well, and BuddyPress and uh, Peepso, the other solution uh, that we have used and still using at the moment, um, are very responsive to accessibility issues. So that, that is uh, very good. Oh, and just um, getting back one thing Joe had mentioned to me earlier, just to explain how I, uh, in particular, use the internet and what I mean by uh, a screen reader when I say that and accessibility. I actually started using the internet way back in about 1996, um, when there was still um, Windows 95 was the operating system. So we've come a long way since then. Uh, using the internet back then, uh, there was very basic speech technology that read out what was on the screen. Uh, the internet back then, due to speed of the internet, was very simple, mainly text-based, so it was actually very easy to use. The software could easily read out websites, no issues at all. Uh, as the internet uh, progressed through Web 2.0, it got much uh, worse for quite a while. Uh, the use of Flash uh, in particular, and we're very grateful to Apple and Google for helping uh, get rid of uh, Flash and hopefully Soon it will be something that developers never even contemplate using. Um, it is used, unfortunately, a lot more, we discovered on our last trip in Europe. Uh, lots of the websites are made uh, with Flash over there, and it is completely inaccessible to screen readers. The software simply cannot read what is on the screen. Um, it's a lot like many PDF documents, uh, if you're using them then uh, PDF by itself is not actually a text um, document. It's a graphical representation. Um, so PDF documents do cause a lot of accessibility issues. Uh, I personally don't like them on websites. With all the uh, page designers we've got now, lay out your information on a web page. Uh, that's what your website is meant for. And the PDFs just cause many issues across devices and for accessibility as well. Uh, but yes, yeah, so my software uh, has to know standard HTML makeup of the page. It analyzes it, uh, converts it into the format that it can then read out. Um, so it's one, when you start using non-standard uh, elements, or uh, perhaps maybe use buttons when you should be using a link on a page, or vice versa, uh, then the screen reader can get confused as to what's happening on the page, and that uh, in turn causes accessibility issues. Um, but, and uh, unfortunately, I haven't used Gutenberg uh, too much these days, but the more JavaScript you use on your website, uh, the more problems it normally is, uh, because it just causes so much processing in the person's browser, and software sometimes can't uh, cope with that and know about all the changes on the site. So there are software tools out there that can help you test uh, your website, but I won't go any further into the accessibility now. But suffice to say that that was one of the um, reasons we have used the WordPress solution, because it is so adaptable, and you can make those accessibility adjustments. So back, back to uh, our journey and experience with our community. We started uh, with BuddyPress. 
Uh, we have been using um, WordPress itself since about 2010. Uh, so we were familiar with uh, that, and when we wanted to create a community, uh, we first of all started with just uh, blog posting and uh, comments on blog posts. Uh, but our network, our, our sector, didn't uh, really like that process for building a community. Um, we also looked uh, into and did try a forum um, software, BB Press uh, was used. Uh, and whilst it works well as a forum, again, that is seen uh, by our members and users as very restrictive and more designed to post a question and get answers rather than a social media network uh, like Facebook where you can essentially post just general daily activities and upload photos and all of those sorts of things which really aren't designed well for a forum. Uh, now, there are uh, integration plugins uh, for both BuddyPress and uh, Peepso uh, to use forums within your community. We did try that, uh, and from our personal experience, I'd highly recommend against it. Our members just found it confusing because you'd have a, a group for a topic, uh, perhaps for the NDIS, and then there'd also be a forum. So people didn't know where to post their comments, where to post their questions. You get people posting in both areas, and then the answers were spread out, and people didn't see them both. Uh, so I think you just really need to um, choose whether you're going to go down the groups or the uh, forum route. Uh, you can turn groups off in both BuddyPress and uh, Peepso. So you could use uh, you know, personal profiles from the social media side and then forums. Uh, but we think groups are what people are used to with Facebook. And it's always more difficult to get people to swap uh, and start using something they're not familiar with. Um, so that's why we stuck, as ended up turning off the forums just using groups, and people are much more uh, familiar with that, and that has gone much better. Now, as I said, we started with BuddyPress, uh, and that lasted until we were up to about 1,000 uh, members. At that point, we started having many uh, technical issues with uh, hosting and plugin conflicts, uh, bugs, um, certain plugins and for messaging and uh, chat, uh, simply timing out or not working uh, when trying to use that many members. And in the scheme of things, for you know, perhaps if you're just having a community for your business, then either solution is going to work well for small numbers. But as we were uh, growing, uh, then we did get problems there because the core component um, with BuddyPress then needed a lot of extra plugins added to it to get the functionality we wanted to customize things, to get the chat and email and inbox messaging that we uh, needed to give to our members. Um, so it was then that we decided we were either going to have to spend a lot of money on uh, customizations and uh, development work, um, or we became aware of Peepso, the new, a new community uh, project. And they actually had, uh, has about 30 now um, extra integration add-on plugins that do things within the community. And the best part is that as they bring out updates to the whole system, then they are testing to make sure it works with all those add-on plugins and integrations. So you're much more assured that uh, your whole community is not going to break down and you can uh, do your upgrades with much more certainty. Uh, with BuddyPress, the plugins come from many different uh, developers, and that was the particular problem, that they weren't always uh, testing with each other, and when there was an update to one, it might break another one. Um, so I think with BuddyPress, our experience has been to stick to perhaps a couple of the major um, BuddyPress clubs uh, that are out there that have plugins, um, some free, some paid being Buddy Dev and Buddy Boss, uh, both have a, a lot of good uh, work. And uh, then there are some, of course, uh, Boone, uh, who's the lead developer with BuddyPress, has some excellent free plugins in the repository as well. Uh, so our advice is just to uh, stick to as few a, fewer different developers as possible. Uh, now, we have been Going with Peepso, up until um, about three months ago, it was performing well. But now we've got up to about 4,800 members. It, again, despite using um, 
very powerful hosting. Uh, it has started having severe performance issues. Uh, and that's actually been the one major complaint from our members, that the site was too slow or timing out. Um, and s simply because we then uh, had some performance testing done and discovered that the way some of the add-ons uh, for PEEPSO were written, they were not going to be efficient as our community grew. They would require a lot of recoding uh, to work in a better way. And uh, that has led us back to the decision to swap back to uh, BuddyPress uh, starting in a couple of weeks' time when we've got the chance to do the uh, swap over of our site, uh, redesign the pages, etc. Uh, because BuddyPress has come a long way since we uh, stopped using it. One of the major missing factors for BuddyPress when we swapped to PeepSo was the moderation capability. Uh, BuddyDev only in the last few weeks has brought out a very powerful uh, moderation plugin to let the community uh, report content, uh, queue it up, have uh, auto content hiding with multiple reports, and all of these uh, features that will make uh, the community much easier to manage. Um, and BuddyPress code itself has been optimized a lot in the last 12 months. Uh, so the core component of BuddyPress is working a lot better. Um, we are going to need to uh, still do some custom, custom work, and uh, yeah, that will take some time and money, and being a small startup by ourselves, it just uh, depends on budget and uh, finance. Yeah, so just to uh, expand a little bit on the performance problems, in case you're not aware, uh, WordPress itself as a very uh, basic process has to put together, compile each page, uh, each output as it's displayed on the screen. Now, with a static site, uh, the way that that's compensated for is either your host or through a plugin, a caching plugin, helps uh, store in memory or on disk uh, lots of those components of the page or a whole page to display it much quicker, uh, to not place as much strain on the server and generally then even uh, shared hosting can cope very well. With a community, uh, it is essentially a membership site. People have to be able to log in to WordPress uh, to use the community features so that the site knows who's doing what, who's posting what content. And when uh, you're dealing with logged in users and members, most standard uh, WordPress caching methods uh, won't work. Uh, which means you need more and more powerful uh, web hosting to cope with the extra processing that's uh, being done to put each page together to display the community activity, to list people's friends, to dig out the comments and likes and everything else from the database. Um, so really, uh, you do need to work well with your hosting company. Uh, a couple of things we're looking at, uh, talking to one of the very big uh, WordPress development companies called TenUp, uh, who produces uh, the Elastic Press plugin that works with uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, they're looking into now and we'll be developing uh, that to work with BuddyPress, uh, which will take a fair bit of work, but that will dramatically uh, enhance the performance. Um, you also need to look into things like uh, object caching. Uh, whether that's done through Memcached or Redis, Redis, I'm not quite sure how you say that one. Uh, just as an example, uh, on uh, Kinstra, our hosting, uh, before we turned on the object caching, um, you know, a page might take 20 seconds to load. Uh, turn that on and it was down to three or four seconds. Uh, so just way faster just through adding that add-on. Uh, many shared hosts, of course, um, can't or won't or aren't set up to let you add that object caching. Uh, so that's why you do have to progress to a VPS, uh, some form of dedicated or managed uh, WordPress hosting. And uh, yeah, that's why we're, we're personally at the moment uh, with Google Cloud uh, hosting through Kinsta and uh, we're looking at moving back to Amazon uh, hosting through uh, Pagely or another company using their technology, uh, just because it's much easier to scale on those cloud, flat, cloud platforms. Yeah. 
Yes, this uh, slide just covers moving back to BuddyPress, but uh, it looks like I've gone through most of that already. The uh, couple of features there that I uh, hadn't mentioned before, and one of the reasons for using um, WordPress is that we do have a member's uh, blog on the community. So we're still using the blogging components of WordPress. Uh, us as site owners and site members can uh, submit blog posts. Uh, we have their posts go into a moderation system and then we uh, publish them. Uh, but that uh, has been working well and you can get some excellent plugins to let you have uh, member submitted posts uh, from front end uh, on your site. Uh, the other, one other factor that actually led to us coming back to BuddyPress is wanting to create an app for our community. Uh, the way the internet usage is these days, we have had a lot of requests from members uh, for an app. And WordPress is a very good uh, platform and it can actually integrate with some app development tools. Uh, one in the community is actually called App Presser uh, that we are going to be using with BuddyPress. The good part is that that uh, company, AppPressor, has actually built the integration with BuddyPress, so you don't have to do all that work uh, yourself. Uh, whereas there is presently no integration with Peepso, uh, which means lots of the community features don't work properly in the app. Um, so these tools essentially run through another theme and some plugins on your site to uh, that the app calls uh, through API or uh, know its various back-end methods and then the content is all managed through your central WordPress site uh, so yeah otherwise to create custom apps is going to cost a lot of money uh, whereas this way of course it, you know all your data stays in sync and uh, people get to use the community uh, so that's definitely uh, one advantage there of moving back to uh, BuddyPress until you know Peepso does have it on its roadmap to uh, create an integration with AppPressor or another system, uh, but that hasn't happened yet. So that is, as I said, another factor. Oh, yes. Now, the other thing that's technically uh, not part of our Australian law or American uh, system, although it has actually been passed now in California, coming into effect in 15 months' time, is the European GDPR uh, General Data Protection Regulation System. It is something though that uh, you need to consider uh, as a community, particularly because Facebook's been going through so much bad publicity with uh, users' data. Uh, the, the European system requires, and uh, technically it requires it of any business, whether you're European based or not, uh, if you're operating with European customers or members. Uh, you have to give access to the data, you have to let them edit it, delete it, download it. Um, and Peepso has developed a full integration for that, uh, so members can actually request all of uh, that access and functions themselves, which is uh, very good. Uh, BuddyPress, on the other hand, at the moment, is just using WordPress's uh, built-in uh, data privacy tools. Uh, which do let you access all the data and export it and delete it, but it has to be initiated by the site admin. Um, so you have to set up a contact form on your site, let a user make a submission, and then you have to go in and manually uh, trigger that process. Um, so that is a downside of uh, BuddyPress at the moment. And uh, there are some major privacy changes coming to WordPress. Uh, but unfortunately, it now looks like they'll be 5.1 or 5.2. Uh, they were possibly happening in 5.0 at the same time, but uh, Gutenberg has taken too much of the development time, and uh, I'd have liked to have seen it done the other way around myself. I personally think privacy is way more important than the page designer when there's alternatives out there. Uh, but you know, that is coming, and there is enough to manage at the moment uh, with better management tools coming. And when dealing with um, members' data, uh, don't forget that uh, you do have many external systems. Uh, for example, we use uh, ConvertKit, 
uh, you might use in, uh, in Fusion, Soft, or Aweber, and uh, then your help desk software, um, perhaps your transactional email system, uh, SendGrid, uh, is the one that we use. All of those various third-party tools hold members' data, and you need to also have a way to let customers uh, access, delete, edit, control, all of that. Um, there is, um, at the end of the slide, and the slides will all be available uh, afterwards, there is now a plugin called Privacy WP that actually integrates with many of those third party services and adds them into the default WordPress GTP GDPR system uh, so that when a person does a download or a delete request, it actually takes care of it in all of those systems for you. Um, so, yes, we have that on the community so that everything uh, is integrated. Yeah. Uh, just to come back to hosting and to go through our personal experience, um, in the early days of our online presence, we certainly used uh, a shared web host like many people start with, and that's a very cheap, uh, easy solution. Uh, but once we started doing community, we've used uh, the page or Kinsta as a very powerful managed WordPress host. Uh, the, the difference that a quality managed WordPress host makes is that when you're taking care of it yourself, you can get very uh, stressed and have to worry about all those technical issues. Once you have a uh, quality managed host, you really don't have to worry about hosting too much, uh, apart from whether upgrades are required depending on the growth of your uh, community and that sort of thing. Um, so yes, it does cost more, but you get a lot more power, a lot more features, uh, a lot more safeguards. Um, for example, um, Jetpack, who's one of the sponsors here, you need to look at uh, backup systems. They have uh, Vault Press, which can do real-time uh, backups of your WordPress installation. Uh, our host, Kinsta, uh, has an add-on for hourly backups, uh, which we do on the community site. Uh, your more static sites, just daily, is fine. Um, and of course, Amazon, you can push your backups onto their storage system and things. And when you're dealing with the community, because one of the features that people want to make use of so much uh, is uploading pictures and uh, files for their friends and sharing all, all these things that would quickly overload your uh, WordPress hosting account and your database, uh, for that matter, uh, then you do need to look into a solution. We use uh, a plugin called Offload uh, Media. Uh, it used to be called Offload uh, S3 that takes all our media libraries, so that means all the uploads, off onto uh, Amazon S3. Uh, they've now added on um, other storage um, providers as well if you want uh, more choices, uh, just so that you don't have to overload your hosting and obviously hosting disk space uh, normally is much more expensive. Uh, and then you can offload it and use a CDN uh, provider such as Cloudflare or the Amazons or uh, Google uh, to serve it so that it's again not stressing your server. Yeah, just to mention a couple of plugins that uh, we have found uh, found uh, extremely useful, and then some general comments on plugins. Uh, there is uh, one called WP Fusion, and a brand new one in the last couple of weeks as well called Uncanny Automator uh, that you really should look into with a uh, community or any WordPress uh, site where you do marketing. Uh, they can they essentially act as um, a bridge between WordPress and your CRM system. So you can um, tag people for doing certain things on your site. You can enter tags into your CRM and then automatically add them to BuddyPress groups or uh, you know, do all sorts of things depending on what they do on your site. And yeah, they wonderful to explore with marketing. The one uh, general comment in terms of plugins that we found with the community, as I said before, is to make sure you get them from uh, quality providers. As usual, make sure they're maintained and updated. 
And as a personal preference, I prefer paid uh, plugins, premium options to free ones, uh, simply because then I know the developer is going to be motivated to maintain uh, and improve those plugins. So you're going to get a, a better experience too if there's any bugs that come up. Uh, but yes, you do have to carefully look at any interaction between your plugins. And uh, now, any questions I think we're up to? Oh, yeah, just uh, there is at the end of the slides a list of some of the plugins that we found uh, extremely useful with the community.